In Good Shape, your health magazine on DW, featuring an interview with a different expert every week. Today, the show is about my most favorite topic. It's about food. Can food make us sick? That's what I'm going to talk about with Dr. Andrea Sturm here in Berlin at the Red Cross Clinics in Berlin West End. Welcome to In Good Shape. Dr. Andrea Sturm is an expert on nutritional medicine, gastroenterologist and head of the clinic for internal medicine. You are what you eat. However, not everything what we're eating is good for us. Dr. Sturm, what exactly is celiac disease? So celiac disease is a disease where the surface of the small bowel is disappearing. Patients are not able to absorb nutrients, for example, iron or folic acid or albumin. So the body is starving. When you perform gastroscopy, what would you see would, would give you a hint that the patient suffers from um, celiac disease? If you go with the endoscope in the small bowel, which is depicted here, you can see very nicely the uh, increased surface of the small bowel here. So the uh, scalloping of the folds, it's a typical sign for celiac disease. We go in, we take biopsies, and the pathologist will tell us that there is a decreased surface, and this is the first hint of celiac disease. But where does it come from? It's an immunological disease, so the background is genetic. So somewhere on your chromosomes is determined that you will develop celiac disease later in your life. Is there anything which can trigger it, like the use of alcohol, for instance? Unfortunately, we do not know any triggering factors. It would be nice to know it because we know that there are families with a high prevalence of celiac disease. If your father or siblings have already uh, celiac disease, it would be nice for you to prevent it. However, there is no medication or there is no action which can prevent the disease. And what are the usual symptoms? How would I know that I suffer from celiac disease? It depends a little bit on the age of diagnosis. For for uh, infants, usually it's a retardation of the growth. It's bloating, it's the kids are not developing nicely, and so they're going to the pediatrician, and then some blood tests will give you the results. With older or grown-up people, usually it's anemia. You feel fatigue, you feel tired, you know, you, your face gets pale. You go to your doctor, and he will diagnose anemia. If he does next steps, then you know you have celiac disease. And are there any risk groups who more often would uh, develop celiac disease? Yes, we know it's a disease more of the white people and more of females. But however, there are many countries in the world where probably the diagnosis is not really made due to inability of endoscopy and blood tests. But until now, we know it's more in the Western countries. And does the patient's number vary from country to country? So the Western countries are more affected than, um, say, the Asian countries? There's a high incidence of celiac disease in India too, and also it's coming up in China. We do not have good numbers for Africa, for example. Mm -hmm. and, and how do you treat celiac disease? The most important treatment is withdrawal of gluten, to avoid it in your daily food, because this triggers inflammation. It's like an allergy. You have to avoid allergic medication, which is in that case gluten. So after three to six months, your GI tract is normal again. But it's difficult to avoid gluten in your daily life. And, and can you cure the disease? It's a genetic disease, and there's no cure available really for genetic diseases. Maybe in 20 or 30 years, we do not know that. But you can decrease the symptoms of the disease, and you can live a normal life with a normal life expectancy. But it's normal, it's, it's important that you're not starving and that your iron and folic acid and so on and so forth is restored to normal. And is this disease dangerous? Yes, it is. First of all, if you do not have enough nutrients, you can starve. People can starve to death if the diagnosis is not set. On the other side, you know, if you prevent gluten, you know, usually you have a normal life expectancy. However, some patients might develop a lymphoma due to continuous inflammation. We have to diagnose it early and have to treat them with chemotherapy. Dr. Sturm, is it right to say that gluten intolerance can lead to celiac disease? No, they're two complete different disease entities. 
The celiac disease is an allergic disease. The gluten sensitivity is called non-celiac disease sensitivity. So it's an intolerance of gluten, nothing to do with an immunologic disease. So is it dose dependent then? Indeed, allergic diseases are independent from the amount of antigen in most cases. But if you have just a sensitivity, it might be the case that you are tolerating low doses of gluten or of antigen, but high doses may cause abdominal pain, bleeding, or fatigue, which is an often a symptom of gluten intolerance. When I look through the internet or through all the social networks, I think that this is more like a trend right now we see with the gluten sensitivity. So, so do you think it's a trend? On the one hand, yes. You know, a lot of people now have gluten sensitivity, but on the other side, we are changing our microflora. Don't forget that our genetics are determined for 10,000 years, but the microflora has changed in the last 10 to 20 years rapidly, depending on food from Chinese restaurant, Indian restaurant, from our traveling, which has increased in the last decades. So our microflora changes, and so our tolerance toward food is changing too. So if I would think that I'm gluten sensitive, what should I do? So what you should do, go to a doctor and check if you have celiac disease. If you do not have celiac disease, which can be determined by blood or by endoscopy, try to avoid it. Try to decrease, to withdraw gluten from your food. There are signs here in Germany and other countries here. It's like a green sign where you can show or we can see that there's no gluten or very, very low doses of gluten and try to eat it. It's more expensive and it's inconvenient because you cannot go just easily to restaurants and eat whatever you want. But if you want to avoid it, that's the best way to do so. Is it a right choice to skip gluten altogether? No, that's not the case. Gluten is not healthy or it's not dangerous. It's just a part of uh, wheat. So if you want to avoid it, that's fine. But eating gluten is healthy too. And you cannot save any calories and don't get um, obese? No, that, that would be nice. That would be, be nice. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> we got a viewer question from Russia. Maria Smirnova wants to know if she can just cook uh, her food in a certain way to get rid of gluten. You cannot destroy gluten by cooking, so you have to buy nutrition which are gluten free. You cannot get it out of your food. If I tolerate gluten as a kid, can I develop the gluten sensitivity over the years? Yes, you might. You know that elderly people have a different microflora than young people. And so your tolerance to different nutri nutrients or sugars is changing. Yes, you can develop it later in life. And if I'm gluten sensitive and my life partner is not, is it dangerous for me to use the same knife, for instance, or the same plate? You have to distinguish between gluten sensitivity and celiac disease. If you have gluten sensitivity and eat gluten, nothing happens with your body. It's just like bloating and incomfortness, but there is no damage to your body. So it doesn't matter where your girlfriend or boyfriend cuts a knife. That's different to celiac disease, which is an allergic disease. And you should avoid, you must avoid gluten in this case. Thanks so much for inviting me today. It was a pleasure for you having you here. Thank you.